Here is the topic seven test answer key version number three. First, uh, first question was a little bit. I uh, kind of had fun with it actually. What is true about the graph of tangent function? It's actually all of these are true. You got to remember the concept is how tangent is defined. The period is only pi. The period is only pi for tangent and cotangent. Remember these other concepts will help you uh, remember. The definition of tangent is sine over cosine, and it's always increasing. So those are the concepts to help answer those questions. Complete the square and identify the vertex. You have to be able to get rid of that a. Factor out the a so that the leading coefficient is 1. Then, only then do you split it, square it, add it. But when you're adding this 16, are you only adding 16? No, you're adding 16 times 4, which is 64. And then remember, vertex form is everything on the left side to identify the vertex, remember h lies. I can't tell you how many times kids try to multiply this out and then simplify and then for some reason you're solving for x. I can't understand that when we've done finding the inverse so many times you just swap x and y and then isolate y with inverse operations. That's it. This is not a hard skill. It's just you guys aren't looking at this and remembering this and remembering what to do. Same thing with this one. This is what a rational function looks like. This is what a rational function does. It makes these L branches. You have to remember the rational function parent, especially going into higher levels of math. And then remember, if we add an H or a K, it just moves the asymptotes up or down or left or right. And the branch behavior is still the same. Let's see, down here. Um, properties of logarithms. When you, if you see or hear or look at a question with properties of logarithms, remember logarithms have their own set of rules. You cannot look at 5 log and 9 log and say that's 14 log. No! That is incorrect. The constant out in front of log jumps in to be an exponent on the argument. 2 to the 5th power is 32. The product property of logarithms says if I'm adding logs, I can multiply the arguments together and write it as a single logarithm. Down here, you also got to understand you can convert this exponential into a logarithmic expression and then use change of base formula to find the exact answer and then use a calculator to find the correct uh, approximate answer to the nearest thousandth. Okay, turn the page. Let's see. Memorize the unit circle and the major reference angles. If you don't get these right on the final, you'll probably get a zero for your TF standard grade. The concept for amplitude of a sine or a cosine graph, you've got to remember the concept. It's just like remembering your name. The amplitude is half of the max minus the min. So 17 minus 5 is 12. Half of that is 6. Done. That's the concept for amplitude. Going on. Again, you have to remember the rules of logarithms and how to convert back and forth. If you see a logarithm, convert it. Do swirly. 4 to the third power equals the argument. 4 to the third power is 64, and then it's easy sauce after that. Down here, you have to remember if you're solving and you have a proportion, the easiest thing to do is cross multiply. But of course, you have to double distribute to cross multiply correctly, and then it's easy sauce after that. Got to remember how to solve different types of equations. For this one right here, I didn't write anything other than you have to remember what are the shape and what are the description words of the distributions. Look at all the multiple choice questions you've seen that look like this, and you'll be able to figure out those concepts. Here was a new one that you didn't see before on any review or any test, but conditional relative frequency means take the condition I said of music, and now we have to remember to use 34 and 16 as the denominators. That's how you got that one and that one. And then just create these percentages as a decimal. Okay, that's the end of that video.